he had enormous amount of respect amongst academics because he was able to converse with them and, and talk with them on you know uh, that kind of level of interest and intelligence and sort of background reading so you know he had enormous r respect and I, and I remember him saying that uh, to me that one of the highest respects that he he had was you know academics telling him that oh you could have been an academic and in my opinion Michael was far too good to be an academic especially you know his ability to communicate complex ideas and to make people who were not particularly inclined to care about issues. And I think, you know, America in general and even the American left is, you know, somewhat parochial, but, you know, Michael truly had that sort of ability to communicate uh, the importance of events uh, going on in other parts of the world, you know, moving out beyond sort of the, the limited sphere uh, of, of the American left. And, you know, that was, and I know we had an influence on young people because, you know, every so often I, you know, I have students here in the middle of uh, Springfield, Missouri, the, the COVID capital of America at the moment, the, uh, that students will say, oh, you know, do you know, you know, Michael Brooks, you know, I watch his show. He's, he's really funny. He does great impressions. I've met uh, people who have told me that, oh, he influenced them to pick a specific career. You know, I met, uh, I, I recently spoke with a young uh, journalist uh, who was moving out to my uh, neighborhood of the woods who told me how important, you know, Michael was uh, to him and how influential he was. And there were just people, you know, all over the, you know, all over the world who've been touched by you know, Michael's work. And I think that's a real testament. I think, you know, if, if he, if, uh, I mean, I know he was spiritual, I'm not particularly sp spiritual, but if he's looking down from heaven, I think he would be, you know, extremely uh, happy to see the enormous impact he has had on people, especially young people, because the way he spoke, uh, he didn't speak down to people, he didn't dumb things down. But at the same time, you know, he could communicate uh, in a way that I wish more people uh, were able to communicate about, you know, events and, you know, things happening around the world and why it matters to them and why they should care and, you know, what they should do. He was able to bridge between, you, he was able to bridge between this academic world, between the sort of left media ecosphere world and the activist world, uh, you know, in a very, in, in a very adept way, which I think not many people do. Uh, uh, he, he stayed away, and as people have noticed, uh, you know, noted, he stayed away from like the personal beefs and the kind of WWE style that sometimes infects the, the media sphere on, uh, on the left. And that is despite the fact that, you know, Michael could in, in, in sort of his private life be quite a hater when it came down to certain people and certain individuals, but he would never, you know, he would occasionally ring me up. Uh, out of the blue and go on about something or someone who had really annoyed him, but he wouldn't take that into the public sphere. And I think, you know, that is some that, you know, people have spoken about the professionalism, you know, that was part of his, his professionalism. He was, you know, and not only was he able to sort of connect those three spheres of the media sphere, the academic sphere uh, and the activist sphere, but he was able to kind of bridge the kind of electoral left and the revolutionary left, being able to speak to both of them. And, you know, even if people didn't agree with him, a uh, hundred percent of the time on every single issue. Uh, he didn't take it personally. He could make a strong stand on something uh, that might be controversial on the left. For example, you know, the work that we did together on, you know, uh, Syria and the Kurdish movement in Syria was controversial amongst the left. And, you know, he got heat from that, from people, even from people he respected, but he didn't, you know, he didn't use that as an opportunity to burn bridges or to get into a fight with someone on Twitter. You know, he would occasionally sort of message me and like, look at this person attacking me on Twitter. And I was like, are you going to respond? He's like, no, why would I respond? It's pointless. You know, it's just going to, he was a, he was kind of ecumenical with his leftism. And that meant that he had an enormous reach uh, to people, which I think, you know, we're kind of missing uh, on the left. You know what he did was not news entertainment what he did was political education you know that was that was his mission because this wasn't just i mean michael could hustle his uh, youtube uh, uh, show and his patreon and stuff like that uh, but he wasn't hustling that to you know self-aggrandize uh, he was uh, hustling that because he saw him uh, he saw himself as part of a movement and of him having a job that wasn't just to get clicks and likes, but to get people activated in, in, into politics. I mean, you know, Lula is a big deal on the left in, in, 
in a, at least on the you know it is a bigger deal on the left i think in part because of you know the the continuous emphasis that michael made yeah. uh on, on that kit uh, on that case and you know i think he he did that in a, you know really he did a really important thing in that way and i think you know i don't see you know i don't see anyone filling his space and i don't you know i don't think anyone could fill his space because you know he was a kind of a unique I individual who combined like a magnetic personal charisma reinforced by uh, uh, an ego for sure uh, a comedic ability but also an incredible amount of you know humbleness when it came down to that an incredible amount of respect uh, 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 for for people even if they you know didn't share every single view uh, that he had. And I think, you know, there's a lot of lessons that we can take from that, you know, his ecumenical nature towards the left, his, his global perspective. And I should say this, you know, I, you know, I spoke to two chaps from Germany who started doing a German podcast in the German language precisely because, you know, they'd been inspired by Michael Brooks. And it's, it's just, it's just phenomenal to see, you know, uh, how much influence he had in his short lifetime and you know it's painful to con consider you know how he would have uh, you know what he could have done had he uh, lived longer. And I, I, you know, I really feel the absence of his voice at this critical time for the left. You know, with the kind of collapse of the Bernie Sanders project, the kind of malaise that's taking place uh, amongst people on the American left. Uh, I think you know his voice would have been really needed to provide kind of. Uh, perspective because he could speak to many different factions on you know what is very often a fractious and contentious uh, wing of American politics and you know I find you know the, I, I just like uh, just I, I feel his loss you know and you know I, I don't you know I don't know I mean we all have to recover and continue continue his work but it just feel it feels so heavy and so difficult he was i mean ben burgess used this analogy he was like uh, analogy he was like the uh, alexander the great of the uh, of, of left media in that he rose so quickly uh, and became so influential on people it, it, it's you know the counterfactual of what would have happened if he'd survived it, it right. is sometimes painful to think about yeah uh, i've been saying that that's sort of the most difficult part uh for for me to sort of wrap my head around there's just so much um so much left on the table in that respect uh you know 37 is a very young age um and particularly like he was just i felt like he was just at the beginning of what he was doing and, and it already had so much influence and he had a global influence you know i've people from i mean one of the aspects i really liked about michael was that he was he was able to kind of uh, square the circle on, you know, the issue of anti-imperialism. You know, he was able to be, you know, a forthright critique of American em uh, empire without falling into the kind of uh, glorification of, uh, of authoritarian regimes uh, around the world. And, you know, some people didn't like that of him, but I think, you know, many people, I know many people on the Kurdish and Turkish left appreciated his stance, people on the Iranian left appreciated his nuanced stance because you know it's very easy to you know uh glorify you know uh regimes in tehran or or, or in uh, or in damascus uh, uh in a kind of knee-jerk response to the uh, problems of american empire but he you know maintained that nuanced nuanced approach which meant that he had appealed to leftists not only in the united states but leftists who were dealing with their own problems in different circumstances in different parts of the world, you know, and I, I was, I, you know, I'm deeply honored. I'm very proud of the work that we were able to do together in, in you know, in our, uh, you know, in our, in our collaboration. I was, you know, very, you know, I'm very, I'm honored to have been able to call him a friend, that he called me, that we discussed things together. And, you know, I really miss him. You know, it's, it, it, it feels like, it, on one hand, because of COVID, because of all, every, all the political, uh, events that have taken place since Michael's passing that, you know, so much time has passed. But then when you think about it, it seems like only yesterday uh, that he passed away. And, you know, this is something which, you know, I don't, which, you know, 
it, it's just uh, it's just hard to describe uh, the feeling. And I know so many people out there feel the uh, the same way. And I know from a personal, you know, from a personal level, Michael has had a profound impact on my life. You know, there are people that I got to know through Michael that I would never have gotten to know. I, you know, I've gotten to know Matt and David, Doug Lane from Zero Books, Ben Burgess, Leisha, and sort of indirectly Pascal Robert and Jason Miles. I would never have met these people. I would have never been able to work with these people if Michael hadn't encouraged me, hadn't introduced me to people. And, you know, so, you know, personally speaking, you know, I, his effect on my life, on my thinking is kind of incalculable. And, you know, I have, good memories of him you know we spent time together in the Ozarks he ducked out of work for a week I don't know what he told you uh when uh but he ducked out and came to the Ozarks we went up to the mat uh we went up uh, to the, the you know for a hike in the hills we we lurked around uh, Missouri State University campus which I believe Emma has actually been to Missouri State uh University campus to see a Trump rally so uh, yeah, and they all blend you, together. I wish I, I wish I remembered. <laughs> yeah, they all, they all pretty much do blend together. That's certainly true. But it was a uh, you know it it was an honor. And you know, people remember Michael for his uh, Brazil stuff, but he was like very well versed on Turkish and Kurdish politics. He had in fact, that was where he started. Uh, yeah, he he'd been in Ankara. He'd studied yeah. in Ankara. He yeah. he'd studied with Luke Mayville, who of course now is a really important activist in Idaho. So you know, like the, the network that he built that he was building, you know, he was building to a purpose, you know, he wasn't just, he, he wasn't building for himself. He was building, uh, you know, with a purpose, with an objective, with a political project, which I think, again, you know, a lot of left-wing commentary comes down to like what I call AOC discourse, where it's like, is AOC a good guy? Is AOC a bad guy? Am I angry about this thing on Twitter? Am I, Michael avoided that stuff and you know did these deep dive political education things uh you know and he i think that was you know a really big contribution and i think you know in part that was your influence on him i once asked him is like would you say sam steeder was your mentor and that was the only time he got a little bit offended he was like i wouldn't call sam my mentor I, you know he said it's like we work together uh, we work together but um yeah you no know, i think you know, he had enormous respect for you he had a, you know he had enormous respect for people and he wanted to win people over like you know there were a couple of people who he thought were beyond the pale and who were just silly but by and large his objective was to win people to his his political positions without you know being being you know an idiot about it without you know being cruel i mean he has that saying you know be kind uh you know be ruthless with systems be kind with people that you know people often quote and i think that's a that is a lesson that we all you know need to take on board we need to take on board his kind of soft stance on spiritualism because i know like you know i myself kind of come out of the more hardline atheist uh, uh wing of things but you know he helped me uh soften my stance on those kind of things and you know people say he was like super smart which he was but what i think what made him special was that he cared because the reason he knew things about things around the world was because he cared when he listened to people, he read things. And when you care about something, you remember, you, you know, like everybody's taken an exam where they've crammed and they've learned everything and they forget it immediately afterwards. Michael wasn't like that. He would remember things because he saw them as relevant and important. And, you know, he, he, uh, you know, he, he really did believe what he was saying and he really did believe in his pr project, whether you agreed with it or not. I think even people I know who politically disagree with them have said, well, you know, I might disagree with Michael on this or that issue, but I never doubt his sincerity and his good faith engagement with things. And I would say, you know, kind of as a final thing, the thing that brought Michael to my attention was um, uh, an impression that you've all probably forgotten was an impression of Louis Gomez talking about pre-battle massages and about uh, uh, gay gay people in the military, and whether pre uh, whether gay people could serve in the military, and it was like it was just hilarious what was going on about. I, I know about pre battle massages. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he was he was he was a phenomenally funny guy, and I you know, and he and he often would say to me he wanted Bill Maher show. He wanted to have like the Bill the Bill Maher show and do the funny thing uh, uh, instead of like having a, 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 a bloviating. 
a, a, a buffoon like uh, Ma, you know, posturing as the kind of funny left wing person on American mm -hmm. media. He wanted to push American media to the left. And, you know, yeah, what could have happened? I don't know what else to say. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody has spoken beautiful words today. And, uh, you know, in the lead up to this uh, day, it was like, it's kind of a crazy, it's a cr kind of a crazy time uh, for, you know, just thinking, you know, ha it's been a year already. And, you know, and I still appreciate the majority report, but it is a different show without Michael. And I'm not saying better or worse. I'm saying it's, it's just, it's, it's a different show and I will always miss uh, Michael and you, you and Michael's dynamic, which was very much a kind of comedy duo, a political comedy duo, and a type of political satire, which I don't believe anybody can do, because it was, I mean, right wing Mandela, Chris Matthews, uh, you know, uh, Nation of Islam, Obama, I don't think anybody, I, I, I don't think anybody else could have come up with such deep, but also funny and accessible comedy. I agree. Folks, there's more of what you've just saw where that came from. That's if you hit the subscribe and like button. Thank you. Really, thank you.